I'm Steve Allender. I'm uh, one of the senior tax managers at Shorts. And today we're going to be talking about incentivizing staff and tax efficient funding for startup businesses. So there are several ways that you can actually reward staff um, for, and incentivize staff. Uh, the first one is, uh, and these, are, these are limited, there's a lot more, but the first one is a, is a straightforward bonus and that's just paid via the payroll and uh, it's subject to tax and national insurance at source and the employers and national insurance as well. And the employee receives that in their, in their net pay. Um, you can provide uh, taxable benefits to employees. So things like private medical, cars, um, they, they're, they're all ways of incentivizing staff and adding to the remuneration package. There are benefits in kind issues there. Uh, basically, the employee would be subject to tax on the benefits in kind value on that uh, taxable benefit, and the employer would have a national insurance charge as well. Uh, there are benefits that can be provided which are tax free, things like mobile phones childcare vouchers, salary, salary sacrifice schemes, so uh, where salary is, is, is reduced in lieu of pension contributions. Um, so that, so it, it, it provides a bit of flexibility. And finally as well, the one, one thing I also wanted to mention is trivial benefits. This is where the, the employer can uh, gift uh, uh, something of value of up to 50 pounds to an employee, so such as non-cash vouchers, and uh, that's completely tax free. Uh, the, the only proviso is that that's not a reward for services, so it's a Christmas gift or a wedding gift or something like that. This is about share schemes, so uh, this, this applies uh, only really to companies. Um, so this is where uh, key employees uh, want to be uh, rewarded with shares within the company structure. And there are various ways of doing this, and I've touched on a couple of here, which are EMI schemes and company share option plans. Um, now, if it, under these schemes, which are, it can be approved by HMRC, so what that means is that uh, there's, there's key tax benefits uh, provided uh, under these schemes. These, uh, well, an EMI scheme allows an employee to effectively have a grant of an option to purchase shares at a future date, depending on certain criteria, such as the performance of the company or if the company is currently is, is going to be sold. Uh, company share option plans, this is where uh, an employer can grant uh, share options of up to £30,000, and that's open to all employees or full-time directors. So these can be real key incentives uh, to, to, to certain key staff that you want to retain within the, within the business. Uh, growth shares as well. These are basically um, where sh a new class of shares is created within the company and those classes of shares uh, have special rights attached to them and those are gifted to the employee or the, 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 the sold to the employee. And uh, th these give a right to capital on a future sale dip, uh, over a certain permitted threshold. So it gives, it, it encourages the employee to work hard to effectively share the wealth on a future disposal. Tax efficient funding. Again, these are, these are aimed at companies. So these are startup companies where um, it, it, the, the government introduced uh, schemes that, um, that uh, encourage investors to help to, to put money into startup companies uh, and, and, and the, the carrot on the end of the stick in these cases is, is tax, uh, tax benefits. And there's three key um, schemes available uh, for, for, for this type of funding. There's EIS, which is Enterprise Investment Scheme. So this is where an individual can invest up to a million pounds and they will receive a tax relief of 30% on their investment which is pretty generous. Uh, any gains on the future sale of those uh, shares under an EIS scheme are tax-free if they're held uh, for a three-year period or more. And there is also a CGT capital gains tax deferral available for these. This is where if uh, any asset was sold and the proceeds were used to invest in the EIS shares, then the gain on that previous disposal can actually be deferred until the shares in the EIS uh, scheme are actually sold. So there's a deferral scheme available on those. Uh, VCT, this is a venture capital trust. 
The investment isn't as high, it's 200,000, but the income tax relief remains at 30%, like in EIS. Dividends are tax-free, as is growth within a VCT. Uh, there is no CGT deferral available on a VCT, unlike an EIS scheme. Uh, and also with a VCT, there's a five-year minimum holding period. Uh, so if the shares are actually sold within this five year, there's a, there's a clawback of the tax relief, this 30% relief uh, that, that, that uh, was was given when the, when the investment was originally made. And finally, there's a CEASE, which is a seed enterprise investment scheme. Um, the limits are not as high, but the reliefs available are a lot uh, higher and a bit more generous than an EIS and a VCT. So the investment on this one is, is limited to £100,000. But the income tax relief, rather than 30% on the others, um, is actually increased to 50%. And rather than a CGT deferment scheme, this has a CGT reinvestment relief scheme, which basically says that, again, if and assets were sold and the proceeds were used to invest in a seed EIS scheme, 50% of the gain on that previous assets can actually be completely exempt from capital gains tax. So it's not a deferral, it's an actually exemption. So um, a, a lot more generous reliefs, but uh, to, the, the limits are reduced. Thanks very much for listening to this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful.